I mean, you, you, come on, you are a nerd. I have to expect you to go for the people who was playing three series. Yes, I did. Okay, <laughs> good. So, so I, now I we just have to now we just have to look at the people that played three series and and had a had a rough showing in day one. This Vitali. <laughs> Some of the tower. I mean, Axe is going to be a difficult man to kill. He's got phase boots coming out, but you know, who is not difficult to kill at all is Guardic, especially with his on strike once again. What an ideal thing for the Exord Invoker. And he might have another open key. The only thing holding him back is his on strike cooldown. Yeah, but the Lord of the Kisses, though, Crit Artillery is getting rain straight on the heads of the Shadow Shaman. We even have Analog starting to team into the area as well, so the extra damage might catch Nightfall off guard. They're going to be off with the Aether Remnant. Another jump on forward of Nightfall as well, and truly okay. Flyer's going to act as a bodyguard just in case they go on for more. And <laughs> the travel already completed. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's on cooldown at the moment, so it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. If you make one mistake, it's okay, we let it go. Artezi just pump faking Requiem. He's, look how far away Artezi is from anyone else, and now Crit will join. Not at all, Sunstrike, Sam. Let's see if they're going to be able to blow up Arteezy. Without the Mortimer Kisses, they'll be lacking the damage. Maybe with Lumia waveforming into the middle, but Arteezy finds an opening for the rest room, and it's going to send them instantly packing the fear, preventing the attribute shift. Gardic will even try and buy back as well, but there was no potential for the Undying to influence that team fight. They're not even done as well as Arben and Flyer moving over towards the T2 tower. So they fortified just for the multi shot, man, just to try and keep him away. Surely you don't land another Sun Strike onto him. Come on, go for it, Arben. It's nearly maxed out. Oh, I went for it. Where do you use it? There. <laughs> okay. Yeah, later Theol and Roar as well. They actually do make a bit of a move on to it with the cold snap. They laid down the seeds of Serenity. Might be enough, but not enough to be able to stay anything to be able to defend that high ground. Not exactly like Hikori has amazing high ground defense either. Radiant's They've got the blink dagger to be play around on the attack. axe, but it still feels like they are kind of lacking in damage without no. Mortimer's kisses being available. Oh, look at this! Crit. A jump in just inside the base. They have zero cares in the world, evil geniuses. And how do not play them with 11,000 net worth lead? Oh, maybe. maybe the turnaround's going to be there though from Analog. Look at the AOE damage coming up. up around the vision. Crit's there with his blink dagger. So it's going to require a huge wraparound. So good little responses coming through from Hikori to exactly what EG are looking to Lumiere. expect for them. Profitable engagement. Ooh, Lumiere. Be cautious, the rest of the team, though. Oh, so it's going to pop as well. Vitalik gets a jump. All right, it's a little That's a great start. Can they get anything more out of it? Lumiere, though. Hikori the right side. They're on to Lumiere. Shackles in the sun strike, getting rid of the Morphling. They They've also it. caught out Arbid, though. They're going to try and move their attention to Nightfall. Lord's in a little bit of trouble at the moment, even without the cause Nightfall. Here's the one that still can start to rack up the damage if the Spiderlings are nearby. They don't have a response to the Insects. Triple kill for Nightfall. And now we can even look to go for the Snapfire as well. But the TP out will not even keep the kill count. Something crazy. I mean, it was a ridiculous game and, and somehow that game you know, got pushed to the later stages. Uh, uh, sorry, EG vs LGD. I think I said OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 17-0 at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and that game... The new minutes? Exactly. Like, so they're like, all right, you know, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we don't have a repeat of that. Like, let's continue to play this one you know, a little bit safe. Wait for second rush. Get the Aegis. Get the Axe Shard. We don't want to give that opportunity for a Corey because, again, this is a team that... They tied every single series. And apparently that's the trend for them. Arbit, aggressive boots of travel TP down bottom. Never gets the TPs at the moment. Turns the blow up for the core. An easy one to punch with even Arteezy stepping in. Quite yet level 18, but he doesn't matter. He's very rare that he's using the correct for anything other than just the fear duration. The damage seems like secondary to him. But Arteezy just turns BKB, stands his ground. Good luck killing this man. And, well, they will not be able to. As even Rackrim's going to be casted as well. Provides a space to be able to address the tombstone issue. And now they can reset the positioning if required on EG. Keep the, the buffs up onto Arteezy. Bloodlust consistently easy for God. Oh! That's the reaction! Instant X of a red for core. They still get the kill right on the low ground. Lumi is caught out as well. A double tornado from Arbeth lines it up perfectly, and the G is a drop. See some individual brilliance at the end coming through from EG, but really.
Ultimately, the important thing was just a teamwork for them. An incredibly dominant game, too. But all...